Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back on this lovely Wednesday, February 20th. How's everybody doing? Good to see you, Ben. Andrea, good to see you. Ken, good to see you. Grant, Phil, Louis, Lita, everyone, Charles, Ed, everyone. Good, good morning, everybody. So, um, first of all, um, it's <laughs> let me tell you what a what a fun day yesterday. You know, we come back from President's Day and and uh, you know, it, it's very hard to kind of get some good momentum going on in the you know when it go, when we trading where kids were off on vacation. Like I told, uh, like I was on Trade Station yesterday uh, doing my morning briefing with them. And you know, you got to be really careful and very picky. But you know what? Shockingly, we had a big list. And uh, a lot of things did move. So let's go out there and check some of the things out that did do pretty well uh, yesterday. And, and I want to share something with you today, which I think you guys are going to seem very, very interested. Because one thing about being a trader is you have to trade what's going on, you know, what's happening in everyday life. And I think I, I think I, I think I fell onto something last night where I started real, especially this morning. You know, I was up really early. I'm up early every morning here in New York. I'm up about 5:30 in the morning. I'm doing my research, seeing what's moving. You know, for all of us. So uh, when you get these watch lists, guys, believe me, I'm really focusing on what's really looks pretty decent, what's not. But before we do that, let's go over some of the stocks that did do really well yesterday. And um, Let's start off with the, the, the blockchain stock, R-I-O-T. So let me just bring that up here and uh, bring up that stock. That was, you know, hands down a very nice, comfortable stock. Uh, had unbelievable pre-market. You could see here it started roughly about like in the $2 range. And the thing just took off right out of the gate, only up to 1 o'clock. Went to 420, was a huge, huge winner. Uh, blockchain, uh, a bit. Bitcoin stock moved, you know, early in pre-market. It was just easy to see. It was just great. A lot of you guys did really well on it. And, um, you know, there were two other, other ones that I want to point out. The PCG, which I'm going to talk about in a minute because there's something going on with PCG that I think I want to share with you guys. Um, this stock has been an unbelievable swing trade for us. We're killing it on a swing trade. Uh, I'm still kicking myself in the butt that I should have had more shares. Uh, you know, I, I kept averaging up. I bought it. You know, listen, this stock remind me back of 2008, you know, when the, with, with the, with the, with the uh, bank stocks. But Overall, stock's doing pretty well. I want to share something with you with that a little bit later. Uh, but the N, the UNIT is another one I want to bring up. That one was just off the charts. We came in there, boom, plug it in there, plug it in there. I know Josh sit there and gave me a little nice little, uh, uh, you know, uh, feather in my cap. And, and yesterday saying, hey, because listen, I saw this thing popping right around 1160. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? Sure enough, thing ran to 1320. And once again, the stock got destroyed, destroyed, okay, at 20, went all the way down to $9, okay? So it went from nine, it was a great bottom fish. It, and one thing we all know, it wasn't a pharmaceutical stock, so we know that pharmaceutical stocks don't bounce back. But uh, but this thing did make a big, nice little comeback uh, due to some, I don't know, judge ruling or something like that. But it was definitely a great moving stock, and we all did pretty well. So that one uh, was pretty good. All right, now. A couple of stocks on the watch list uh, that we're going to watch, but I just want to share something with you guys, something very, very important. Now, you know, obviously, you know, we're getting into the political, um, you know, presidency coming up uh, 2020, and you're hearing a lot of, you know, chair chatter, what people stand for and what they're doing. So everyone heard about this new green deal that's going on? OK, now, now, look, listen, remember, we do not talk about politics in here, but I'm just bringing up something very, very important I want to share with you. Um, everybody heard about this new Green Deal and read about it and stuff like that. OK, good. All right. So what is the re what is what is the Green Deal? OK, the Green Deal is getting rid of all fossil fuels and just speak specifically just have solar and electric, you know, um, and all that good stuff. So anyway, as a trader. What we look at is that we all know that when you look at certain government projects, it's a lot of money. You know, if it's building a wall, if it's uh, if, if it's a green deal, if it's uh, whatever. But uh, this morning I heard something very interesting because um, Virginia is planning on building a big solar uh, piece of property. So it's supposed to be half the size of Manhattan. Now. How does it help us as a trader? Okay. Now, once again, you love it, you hate it, whatever it is. But 
I, I don't know about you, but I've been seeing a little bit of an uptick uh, on some solar stocks, and you know, and some and and bringing up the PCG trade. You know, listen, being a you know California, we all know is a is a is a, uh, a a liberal democratic state. Maybe they're looking to do the same thing. So, and a lot of the utility stocks will probably benefit from that. So, you know, we all know the catastrophe that PCG came up with. I don't know. I'm just this is completely speculation, okay? But is this pro is this probably going to be something that's going to be spilling over into it? I don't know. Do they benefit from it? You know, these, these are some of the things. Now, I'm going to bring up a stock really quick, FSLR, okay? Now, um, I, I don't know if you guys remember it. About like four or five years ago, I, I was I was in the cyber group room, and like, you know, Canadian Solar, right, Scott? You got a couple of them right there? Okay, Canadian Solar, um, uh, Corningware. They all started taking off. I started seeing my, my watch list. I don't know if you guys remember back then. And I'm seeing all these things start coming up from nowhere. And apparently what was happening, it was getting all these government uh, 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 subsidies for you know everyone doing solar. And all of a sudden, these, like FSLR went from like 12 or 20 to like two, two, 300, this stock right here. And you know, I saw a lot of these uh, sol uh, uh, windmill companies went from like – Twenty dollars to like eighty, ninety. So you know, just like what President Trump was pitching about, you know, the uh, steel stocks. You know, once again, did they sign a contract? Did they not sign? Whatever it is, but we all did well with U.S. Steel. You know, so you just want to keep you guys gotta keep an open mind. This is what you learn as a trader. You know, you learn as a trader. You keep your eyes open, you know, ear. And, and listen, I'll give you, I'll give you a great example because maybe some of you are pretty new here. What happened to pot stocks? Right. You could be anti pot. I don't like pot. People that sell pot should be going to jail. Maybe you go for the murder charge, kill people, whatever you want to call it. Some people are like, oh, my, it's got the greatest, best thing in the world. But as a trader, hate it or love it. Look what happened with TLRY. Right. Let's bring up the, the TLRY. What would it do? OK. It went from twenty dollars to three hundred. OK, so you missed that road. So imagine having, you know, two, three thousand shares of that stock at 20 bucks and selling at 300. And we all know some of us were there. We, we traded it. We did very well. So, you know, and it's not this one. All of them. I mean, Crohn's, all of them be what that, that, you know, that is just another hot industry. So I just want to keep you guys, you know, you know, there you go. Wayne's got a bunch of them. Tan, Canadian Solar. Uh, just listen, uh, it's strictly speculation. I'm just just trying to tell you guys. Just keep your eyes and ears open because the, if that if that green deal does somehow come to fruition and it is a ten trillion twenty trillion dollar deal, I mean that could really blow up stocks to unbelievable for us. You know, just don't let your political beefs uh, beliefs of affect your trading. You know, listen, I've been through the two thousand crash when, when the banks everybody said, you know what, they they're too big, they should fail, they should break them up. You know, a lot, a lot of us people got lost their homes because of it. But as a trader, when they gave all that money and you might be totally against it, I'm like, listen, I, I'm not going to tell you if I was or wasn't. But as a trader, I, I, I was drooling out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, my God, these banks are going to take off. And if you sat down in your chair, you didn't take it seriously. Guess what? You just lost that huge rally. So once again, keep very, very, you know, keep your eyes and ears open because, you know, um, this Virginia deal also, I'm really curious what's going to happen because, uh, you know, if you have a lot of these Democratic states pushing it, you know, you might see a lot of these stocks might take off, you know, not a, and the funny part. Sometimes you even sign a contract, but they sure enough, you want to keep an eye on it. So anyway, uh, you know, I always want to give you a tip of the day. I've been around for 25 years. I've seen what happened. I've seen people blow up their accounts. I've seen people, you know, hold, you know, uh, you know, don't benefit from things. But I just I would just be really Really concerned and watch some of these stocks that are moving just in case any of this stuff comes even close to fruition. Now, um, traders need to make uh, a fortune if the green kill comes as reality. <laughs> you know, like I said, if it comes a reality, you guys are going to make a fortune is unbelievable. So, you know, keep an eye on that. Anyway. Regarding about what is moving this morning, there are a couple of good stocks. Now, obviously, you all know what's going on, uh, what happened with um, – with uh, was it uh, Southwest Airlines? They came out, you know. Listen, once again, 
I don't fly Southwest Airlines. I personally don't like Southwest, okay? Um, won't hold anything against them. I'm just, you know, listen, I, I'm a fan. I like Delta, you know, like United, whatever it matters, but it's irrelevant. Some people love it. They're like, how do you not like it doesn't matter? Look what they did yesterday. You know, um, if you love Southwest Airlines and you bought this stock and you woke up this morning, guess what? You got beat up because, you know, they're having these problems with the, with the uh, mechanics. Um, with the unions, whatever it is, putting a blame on something like that. But anyway, you, if you if you if you heard that news yesterday when it came out and you held it short, guess what? You did great on it. Once again, you don't hold things uh, hold things against somebody. You know, well, it's such a good company. This and that doesn't matter. Catastrophes do make opportunities. So remember that. So anyway, that stock. Um, taking a little bit of a, a a little bit of a hit tip right now. Stock had a great great run up. You could see it went from 46 all the way to 57. But um, you know, I probably would be a little concerned about the support levels right here. A little bit of a brand name. You know, we're not really a big fan of trading these stocks. Uh, but you know what? There's gonna be a lot of canceled flights. They said almost half of the United States is going to be you know affected by the weather. You know, that does cost money in the airlines. All right, so everyone's looking at this stock KNDI. This morning, we were watching this one. This has been our best one so far in pre-market. Stock went from $6 to $7.80. A lot of you guys killed it. Once again, where did it make its biggest move? $8.30. So um, as of right now, I wouldn't do anything until the market opens up. CLSD, another one that I found that's moving pretty nicely. Great iceberg orders. Look at that 10,000 share buyer just sitting at a buck sixty. Um, looks, This stock got destroyed. You could see from $6.00. Gap down, went all the way down to almost a dollar. Built a little bit of a Fausto flag. So it's pushing up a little bit. So I like this stock. Probably could see it test someplace, someplace close to $2, which is here, which looks like it's almost there. If it breaks that, look for the goal a little bit higher. But that one looks pretty good too. DBVT is another one I found on the watch list. Uh, this stock, another really nice, interesting stock because guess what? It looks like it's filling in the gap right now, which is what we want. OK, we saw that happen, you know, with with PCG also when they fill in the gap, they take off their uncharted territories. Once again, thirty seven thousand shares, not up a lot. Eight thousand uh, up eight percent. But uh, spreads OK. You know, remember, it's not about just the stock. You know, you, you got to still get it. So you want to keep an eye on that one. Another stock. Listen, just when you think it's not when it's pouring, it's literally, you know, you could have a. Uh, a, a hurricane stock went from twelve dollars all the way down to a dollar. Though it was coming back, just broke, just hit again, right back to supports. Listen, let's see if it holds you pretty strong right here. I kind of like that. Uh, we, you, some of you remember, we did trade the stock on the bounce, but looks like she went right back to where she started. That's a good sign to get a dead cat bounce right there. S N N A. The big news is CVS. All right. Big news is CVS. So. Uh, oh, there we go. CVS, bring it up. Okay, so CVS um, pretty much got destroyed. Um, stock went from $64 to $82, down to $64, back up. Now it's back down to $64. If it breaks this support, this stock is really taking a big hit. So once again, why is it down? Is it because the drugs prices? Is it because, you know, maybe Medicare for all and they're looking to get rid of all these um, healthcare companies? It could be anything, you know. But at the end of the day, the stock can still go down 63 more points. <laughs> Not that it could, but, you know, you can't go broke. Uh, you don't, don't ever estimate just because it's $63, it can't go, you know, a lot lower. And we've seen that before. And that pretty much does it. Those are all the stocks that we have. Anything I'm missing, guys? Anything I'm missing? K yes, Benito. The KNDI is definitely um, – KNDI is something definitely watching. It looks like it's starting to do a little bit of a – a little bit of a nice little push right here, but just be careful. The biggest problem that we have with this KDI, I, I told you earlier, just be careful of the spread. Okay, it's got nice little uh, iceberg orders here, which looks pretty good, but let's keep an eye on that. Uh, Neil says the ABIO trade also. Yeah, wow, that's a nice one too. Listen, it didn't come up on my radar because it's 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 under a dollar. Um, usually my system doesn't let me to see that because I don't like to trade stocks under a dollar. But yeah, this stock made a hell of a run up, 153 percent ABIO. I'll throw it on the watch list. You know, good uh, good looking out. That's teamwork right there, Neil. All right, all right, guys. Listen, good luck today. Happy trading. Let's get ready. Market's opening up in about less than 10 minutes. Go fill up your coffees. Go hit the restroom and let's get ready to hopefully have another good day like we did yesterday. All right, good luck, everyone. Happy trading.